video. I have a quick editing note. Um, I rewatch my videos before I put them up just to make sure it's in my mind so when I get comments and stuff I know what I'm talking about or I have my brain refreshed as to what I was saying. And I watched it and I completely did not talk about the resolution, the issue I had last week. Um, I went in and within 24 hours, everything was back up again. So my doctor and all that, everything is good, it's fine. And I will update you as those appointments happen. So let's get to our regular video. And I just wanted to tell you that because dumb me, I'm just like, do -de do -de do it was, it was resolved last week so quickly that my brain was just like completely forgot about it. So update on that, we're good. And let's get into the video. Hey YouTube, it's me, Jen, your pudgy bigger outside. This seems to be my designated, uh, weight loss check-in <laughs> location um dogs are outside with me so hopefully we won't start barking but you never know i hear a dog barking they're gonna go over there and bark <laughs> so as you see look i'm getting a few <laughs> leaves changing yeah it's almost that time of year so what we're going to discuss today of course is week number 10 results and i also saw my primary doctor I uh, had an appointment with her, and I want to kind of go over that information as well. So let me move that a little bit. I don't want you to be too far. Okay. So this weigh-in is for week number 10. We're in double digits, which covers from dates September 11th through September 17th. My starting weight this week was 236.8 pounds. My ending weight was 236 even for a loss of 0.8 pounds. So my overall starting weight from July 1st was 264.4, making my total loss so far 28.4. <sighs> Less than two pounds from that 30 pound mark. It's getting pretty exciting. So how did this week go? Uh, food, I would say if 100% would be I was eating perfect for the week, I would say I was at about a 75%. Um, I wasn't uh, eating things I shouldn't have ate, but I was eating a little more calories than I should have. Okay, how's that sound? So uh, that kind of blends into the side effect. Uh, which is the next subject, my side effects were extremely low. Uh, last week, uh, I gave myself 0.20, uh, and I don't think that's quite enough. So I think 0.25, that's what I took today. I did the shot in my leg. I usually do it in my tummy. I go, you know, right to left to right to left. But I don't know. I decided to just do it in my leg this time. I don't know. People say it makes a difference, but I don't think it does, um, but we'll see. Uh, it hurt a teeny bit more, but whatever. I know you're supposed to do different places. My only other, uh, if you look up the guide, it'll show you on your body where you should be doing it. Some people do it under their arm. I don't think I could like hold my arm and then you, I would need an extra hand. So I don't know if I'll be doing that. But that's where it went this week. Uh, exercise. Yes, I am starting to exercise. I just told myself I'm going to do 30 minute walks three times a week. And that, and that, uh, that's kind of what I would do. So I didn't bring out my, uh, my other little pad of paper, but, uh, since I spoke to my nutritionist last week, I have, I have, uh, done three 30 minute walks. So, I'm kind of where I should be. I'm hitting for maybe every other day, and then if something happens and I get a little delayed, it's not a big deal. So three times a week, that's what I'm shooting for. I have a little uh, paper that I use for my food journal each day, and I started putting it on there. It's just easier to pull that out, and then if she asked me, you know, what was your weight from last time I saw you, or what was this, or uh, how long have you been doing this or that, it's very easy to just flip through it and do that. I'm, I'm very anal retentive that way. I don't know why, but it's just one of those things. I love to write things down. It's part of the accomplishing the task for me is writing things down. 
um, mood was okay. So it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was just okay. So um, I guess at the point two o instead of the point two five, I was getting a little bit of that uh, breaking through of the uh, food noise that they call it. Um, food noise. It's like a perfect perfect description for what that is. It's the constant thinking and mulling around and, you know, oh, maybe I'm hungry or, you know, just that the, the food being at the forefront of your brain all the time. And this just kind of pushes it back a little bit where it should be. Um, and then it's not an all day, every day kind of thing. So that, that uh, this week was uh, turned up a little louder than it has been in the past. Um, Let's see, I had a few questions. Um, I've been kind of going back a week or two, and then if I see anything, I mean, there hasn't been many, but if you guys have any questions, just leave them down in, uh, down below the description box, and I will address it in a future video. Um, someone asked me, what kind of meals do I eat? Um, especially when you're not feeling like eating, you have to be... Uh, creative, I guess, in a way to uh, get in all the calories and the right nutrients that you need. I do a uh, I do a protein shake in the morning, um, usually about nine to ten o'clock. Um, it has coffee, a scoop of protein powder, a tablespoon of chocolate uh, collagen powder. The the protein powder is chocolate. Also a frozen, one frozen banana. And then I fill it the rest of the way in the little bunder cup up to, you know, yeah, it's right where you're supposed to fill it up to, but that's almond milk. So I may do a little video on that just to show you uh, in the future what it looks like, but I just put it in there in that order. Coffee, protein powder, collagen powder, frozen banana, the rest of the way, uh, almond milk. And then I blend that up and then I have a nice big cup put lots of ice in there and a nice straw, metal straw, so it's nice and cold. Pour that in there, and then I have a little bit of whipped cream. I do a little on top, and then I sprinkle on some cinnamon because I'm fancy like that. <laughs> so it looks nice. I drink about this much down, and then I try and mix uh, that whipped cream and that cinnamon in there. Ooh, it's so good. And it's a decent amount. It's the biggest blender, Ninja blender cup I have. So it, it really does fill me up. Um, maybe later on, maybe about one or two is kind of when I start to think I should have lunch. Um, I do, um, I usually do a piece of fruit or uh, I could do a sandwich. I know when I was at work last week, I made a turkey sandwich and took that with me. So yeah, having, uh, you know, having a little protein with breakfast and lunch and dinner is kind of what they aim you to do. Um, so I definitely have it with dinner and I definitely have it with my protein shake. Um, so lunch, I, you know, even if I did some hard boiled eggs or something like that, I think that would probably even be good. Um, so yeah, so a piece of fruit, sometimes that's all I can get down. I have been buying uh, the brand. I don't know if everybody has it. It's Milo, M-I-L-O. They make tea. They make it in the individual bottles and then the gallons. And I get a sweet tea that doesn't have any, have any sugar. I don't always get it. Somebody sometimes beats me to it. And I look all the way in the back and there's none. But that uh, has been one of the only things... Uh, that when I'm really nauseous, it just actually tastes good, is that iced tea. Um, someone else asked me what kind of protein, uh, like drinks or protein shakes, do I recommend? Um, the only one I've tried that I've done straight and I really liked it, and they have several different flavors now, is I think it's called Premier. This helicopter, this is the second pass it's gone over. I'm right evidently in the flight path today for Metro Health Medical Center. I can tell by looking at it if it's a medical one or not. Nobody cares but me. There it is. Yeah. Yep. So it's going the right direction for that. So yeah. Hope they're okay. <sighs> okay. So Premier Protein. They ha I think they have chocolate, vanilla, 
uh, I know they have a caramel. Now the caramel would be really good if you mixed it with like a, you know, like uh, in a shake or something. Oh, that would be really good. But right now I'm just doing the protein powder. I do one scoop. Um, and then that protein shake that I told you that I make is about 350 calories. Uh, so if you have any other questions, leave them down below. So I think the only thing to go over now, I know you're all patiently waiting, was my doctor visit. So I went in, I did the regular, uh, you know, they do blood pressure and then they do the pulse ox and then they did a couple other things. I had uh, my blood drawn uh, over a week ago. So she had this, this long <laughs> paper with all the results. And she said, I know you can find that on your patient portal. She's like, but I actually like to print it out because I like to look at a physical copy and then I could just hand it to you. So that's what she did with this. Um, let's see what else, what else, what else? I want to make sure I'm covering everything. So before I get into the numbers, uh, I explained to her about me using Mochi Health. I explained to her how it worked about the telehealth visits, you know, that you talk with your doctor and she's like, well, have they really gone over, um, you know, all the side effects and things you should be looking out for? And I said, yes, they did. As well as I read through the insert of the medicine and also looking online, I, you know, was really trying to educate myself and, uh, you know, any of the early signs that, you know, things are not moving and you could get up, end up with peritonitis or some kind of issue there. Um, or your kidneys, you know, work harder because you're not getting enough liquid. Speaking of liquid. Now we get another plane going over. I'm very close to the Cuyahoga County Airport, which is a smaller airport where a lot of private planes come in and out. It's literally that way by not too far so okay so I explained to her all that she asked about the cost she was like yeah I'm, I'm glad that's working for you and so I told her I'm like I don't think you're gonna be mad but I'm kind of relieved that you're on board with it and she said I know a lot of doctors and Congress is starting to take that into consideration the prices and trying to mandate or regulate the price and how high you can go so I, you know, when it comes to anything like that, there's very slow wheels turn for that kind of thing. And she said, eventually, I think I will be able to prescribe it and it will not be outrageously expensive. Hey, but I said, okay. I said, until that date, I'm going to keep using Mochi. And if it's cheap, it gets cheaper or it is, you know, about the same price. I said, I would gladly get it from you. So, but she was very happy with it. Very happy with uh, how much I've lost. And then very happy when she went over the numbers. So um, one of the numbers I was particularly uh, interested in was my A1C. Um, that is a number that give what they give you and ends up being whether you're regular, like pre-diabetic or have diabetes. Um, I think it's up to like 5.4 or 5.5 and then after you're considered normal or it's considered good, and then after that number, you're pre-diabetic. My number was five. So that is excellent. I think it's 5.5 to like 6.4. That's considered pre-diabetic. She's like, you are not pre-diabetic. So very happy with that. The, um, let's see, the good, no, where is it? The bad cholesterol, which I believe is the, LDL? I think it's LDL. Yeah. LDL. Um, the normal range is 65 to 130. I was 116. She said that is down significantly. She used the word significantly from last year. My uh, HDL or good cholesterol. I could be mixing these up, but that's okay. Um, they say it should be less than 50. Maybe that's the good one. It was 48, so I'm w right where I should be on both of those. She said, your glucose is a teeny bit high, the normal being 65 to 99. Mine was 100. So she's like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, the other number that stuck out to her as not being where it should be was... 
my D3. Now, I've taken D3 as a supplement previously because I had this issue of having it being kind of low. Um, and then, of course, I'm like, well, it's summer. I, I shouldn't have to. No, I have to. <laughs> so I can't remember exactly where that number is, but she's like, yeah, I, I can't, you should really be on something uh, every day for that. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. But the A1C, extremely happy with that. The only thing that also was a teeny bit high was my blood pressure because I was stressed out. <laughs> I was stressed out of going as it was, and then I uh, was running a few minutes late because the traffic in the city where my doctor is was insane. And I, I'm like, you know, I was like freaking out about it. So I got there and she's like, it's a little high. And I was like, yeah, I'm stressed out. That's why. So she basically just said, you know, if that's, uh, you know, if you don't think that's normal for you, you know, go ahead and, and start taking your blood pressure at home two to three times a week. And she wanted to see me back in six months instead of 12. She's like, I want to maybe recheck the D3 and, you know, see how your blood pressure has been over the last six months. Um, I had been on blood pressure medication uh, at, a, at a much higher weight than I am now. Um, I ended up previously when I was losing weight, I got to a point where if I bent over to pick something up or tie my shoe and I would stand up, I would go, woo, like I would get lightheaded. So my doctor was like, you don't need it anymore. Stop taking it. That was at least, at least two years ago. So yeah, so I want to make sure I keep that number in check. And with everything else looking good, I'm not too worried about it. Um, the other thing she told me is she's like, there's three numbers we put in that are on that sheet. We put it into a calculation and it tells us what we, what is a good predictor of whether you will have a heart attack or, uh, what was it? Heart attack or a stroke in the next 10 years. And she's like, we like that number to be under what it's considered 5%. She's like, I know that sounds really low. She's like, you are well under 5%. So the risk of stroke or heart attack in the next 10 years, if you keep to what you're doing, is excellent. It's non-existent. So I was almost in tears. I was so happy. You know, it's good to hear good news. But I knew uh, when you take this type of blood test that my doctor runs, it tells you where you've been over the past three months. Um, so, and I've been, I've been on this since the beginning of July, so I'm probably, probably about three weeks shy of three months for these numbers, so I was pretty, pretty happy about that. So, yeah, very good news. Um, she uh, also talked to me, um, I had mentioned to her, I said last year when I was here, I did, uh, I did the genetic testing for breast cancer to see if I was carrying that gene, and uh, I was not. My daughter also took it. Her doctor offered that to her, and she does not either. But then they do what they call genetic testing, where they put in other information and it gives you a number, and that number determines whether, uh, you know, how you should be being tested and by what method you should be testing and how often you should be testing. So my, uh, you know, my number was pretty low since I didn't have the gene, but then also considering my family history on my mom's side, my mother had breast cancer twice. My, her mother had breast cancer, which ended up spreading. That was the cause of her death. And my mother's aunt, my great aunt, um, had breast cancer and actually passed the age of 44. So that, that kind of family history, uh, last year, she's like, you know, I, I really want to kind of switch up, do regular mammograms. And then the next time do an MRI, I thought they said ultrasound, but she said, no, it was an MRI. So when I went in today, I'm like, this time I'm like, you know, I wanted to kind of revisit that and see where we are on that. And she said, uh, she said, yeah, it's not uh, the ultrasound, it's an MRI. 
and we'd like you to, you know, do one and then the other and then the other. And she's like, not every year, but every six months. So I would basically be getting a regular mammogram once a year. And I would also be getting uh, an MRI once a year. And she said, uh, you know, the insurance is fine with, you know, the mammograms at my age. She said, but they might not cover the MRI for that. And she's like, when you go to make the appointment, they will make the appointment. And uh, uh, if there's any issue with your insurance covering it, she's like, uh, the hospital system that my doctor is affiliated with that's in this area, uh, University Hospitals, has a program that if you, uh, if they recommend that you should do this like I'm going to do, they said that they have, if your insurance doesn't cover it, then they will do an out-of-pocket uh, MRI for $250. And I was like, she's like, that is a drastic reduction. And that's how strongly, you know, this hospital system feels about, you know, doing that. So when I made the appointment, I, I said, I know about the program. And she's like, well, are you okay with that? And I said, yes. So she's like, well, I'll put it in there and we'll see if it goes through the insurance. Um, if it ends up not going through there, then it'll be the 250 and I will call and let you know. So I haven't heard anything for four days, who knows. Um, so we'll see. So I have already scheduled. Oh, also <laughs> the other thing she wanted me to do along with the mammogram is to do the uh, colonoscopy. And I have been worming out of this the last couple of years and I really want to do uh, better and take care of myself and get some of these appointments done. So I said, go ahead and do the requisition. It goes right into the system, just like my blood work did. So I just show up uh, after making the appointment. I don't have to carry a paper around. So we went ahead and scheduled that. Uh, and this, the, the doctor that they schedule, you just don't like show up for the for the colonoscopy, they want to have a pre-visit, like an office visit. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I made the pre-office visit, but I'm probably not going to be able to do the actual colonoscopy until the end of October because we're going to be gone for almost two weeks on vacation. So the other thing I needed to schedule, which I have not done yet, is for the uh, MRI or the mammogram. So I'll be taking care of that soon. <sighs> But that's all my information. Good gracious, I try not to go too slow. But really, really good news this week um, with the information and the numbers and, you know, how my doctor feels about what I'm doing. Um, so very happy, very happy with it. Um, she also told me, you know, if there's any issues with the doctor or you need to make an appointment or speak to me about, you know, taking the medication, she's like, just call, make an appointment, and we can sit down and talk. So she's on board and on board to the point where she's like, hey, if you need anything, let me know. So that's good too. So very happy with all this information this week. Hoping to do a little bit better eating wise this coming week. Um, I'm coming down off of a few stressors. So I'm really trying to, you know, get that where it needs to be. Um, like I said, we'll be leaving in a couple of weeks for vacation. I uh, don't have the exact dates in front of me, but I'm going to be going on vacation. I am not. Uh, I will continue to take, take my shots, take them with me uh, and do them. And I also am going to be eating well. I'm not going to try and be perfect. Um, we will be gone during our 35th anniversary, so I plan on having maybe... A bite of something sweet if I feel like it um, and I may not be like crazily writing things down of what I'm eating I really want to enjoy my vacation but enjoying my vacation doesn't include shoving food in my face so you know I might have a treat here or there but I'm really gonna try and you know eat what I should and how much I should while I'm on vacation and also too when I eat better on vacation I feel better because if you don't you're like yeah we're just gonna eat whatever then during the vacation you're like oh I feel like death and I don't want that either so but that's where we're at for this week week 10 so I appreciate you guys tuning in 
um, and listening to me yap. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them down below. Uh, otherwise, I do appreciate all the compliments and all the, you go girl, I appreciate that. That's That really makes me feel good and, and keeps me moving forward. So, yeah. So I will see you next Wednesday with week 11 results. And I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you then. Bye.